find it at a good price. But you don't have to worry about us. We've already been caught. Have you seen any delicate sauce? Delicious. And if you answer our question, Golden Valley, the only microwave. Do you know? Confucius say nuggets of wisdom are never as tasty as these. When I first started out in New York with my acting career, not just theater, but I also, of course, wanted to do uh, television. And there is not as much television at that time in New York, there still isn't, as, for instance, in Los Angeles. However, what there was was daytime soap operas. Uh, all of the major networks did them, and um, the, the, those were uh, available if you can get an audition for uh, those, you know, the, the, the soaps, right? Okay. So, at the time, CBS, one of the major networks, had, I, uh, you know, this the one day a year, one day a year, you could call this one number and get an appointment for an audition in the future of that following year for the casting directors at CBS. There were three or four of them. I believe there were three of them. Okay. And so, uh, <clears throat> you would, obviously everybody, you know, all the actors everywhere, not just New York City, but they're, you know, picking up the phone, they're calling, and you just call until, if, if, it answers, you get an appointment time, a day and a time in the following year. So obviously, from you know the time it starts to the time it ends, it's solid, busy signal. And what you do is you sit by a phone, what I did, and you just dial the number, right, it's busy, hang up, dial it again, busy, hang up, right? For hours, you are doing this to try to be one of the fortunate ones who they answer, you know, get the phone answers, and then they give you this time. I did that. I don't know how many hours of this call, hang up, call, hang up it took, but I eventually got it. I'm, I'm going to guess it probably took about four hours. And many people, obviously, many, many, many people will call all day and they will not get through to get the time. I was a fortunate one. I eventually got a time and it was something like, I mean, it's a very brief conversation. It wasn't a conversation. It was like, I'm going to just make up a date. Uh, April 23rd, you know, at CBS, the, the studios, which was on uh, West 57th Street. Um, it was actually uh, years, many years ago, like a dairy, I'm told, or whatever. It was a huge complex at that time. So uh, April 23rd, 5 p.m., you know, confirm. Yes, I'll be there. Okay. And then it's your responsibility to get there before your call time and be ready. And what you are going to do is a three-minute scene. No longer than three minutes, if I remember and two people. So you find a scene partner and then you're going to come in and you're going to do this scene for whoever is available, one, two, or three of the casting directors of CBS and they will watch you. That, that, that's a given, okay? You might not get all three, but you're going to get somebody. So uh, I was given a time and wow, okay, you know, I mean because the vast majority of actors aren't going to get a time because there's just not that many times. So <clears throat> I chose a scene and I spoke with my uh, New York agent and, and I asked her for advice on getting a female scene partner. Uh, you have to be careful 
of who you choose because <clears throat> you need someone responsible and you need someone who's dependable and, and, and someone who, you know that you can work well with because you're going to have to rehearse this on your own. So I talked with her and we came up with a young lady. I had only met her once or whatever. Very nice, okay. She was primarily a dancer and she did musical comedy, but um, uh, very likable and you know, that's what you really want in the end. It's not so much how good a person is, it's how reliable are they. And so <clears throat> I contacted her, we explained what was going on and she was delighted because you know, uh, she gets a chance to do this uh, rare thing and um, uh, be my scene partner, so to speak. Well, when I handed her the scene that I wanted to do, <laughs> I immediately got contacted with her and she wanted to talk to me. And she looked at me, do you really, are you really wanting to choose this scene? Okay, the scene that I chose, um, first of all, CBS hands you a list of scenes that you can't do, they don't want to see. And they're almost all scenes that are done a lot in acting classes, like uh, Barefoot in the Park scene, uh, Male, Female, the uh, Two Brothers and All My Sons or Death of a Salesman or something. Okay, anyway, they've got all these scenes that are used a lot in acting classes and they don't want to see that and they say, you know, sorry, but we can't really evaluate you fairly because essentially they're sick of seeing those scenes. They also tell you not, and you need to remember this, not to remember uh, bring in a scene with all this cussing in it, you know, because that becomes offensive. Uh, they don't want, they just don't want to deal with that, all right? And you shouldn't be doing that anyway for an audition scene. And a lot of actors make a very poor choice of doing that. But anyway, the scene that I chose was a, a 1950s early television scene that was later made in a movie. It's called from a, a, a movie called Marty. And Ernest Borgnine, a character actor, not known, you know, I don't know him, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he's not known for being a handsome leading man. It was a story of, that was touching, humor, uh, a great writer, Patty Chayefsky wrote it, and it was about a middle-aged, bachelor who lived with his mother who was not you know a handsome guy he was a homely guy and um, the scene is where he goes to a dance and he's dancing finally you know uh, with this uh, lady who no one asked to dance who also is in his situation and um, so she's looking at me and you know I mean, is this scene really right for us? She's used to musical comedy. But I wanted to do a scene that I thought no one else would bring in. No one's ego is going to let them bring this in. And it's very well written, okay? It's where the two of them are dancing and they're meeting for the first time. So we rehearsed it. We worked on it. Uh, she didn't complain, you know, she was very nice, professional, and uh, okay, here we go. It's now time to go to CBS, their headquarters studio, and do the scene for the casting directors at CBS. So Phyllis and I show up at CBS uh, for our hard fought for audition, right? And uh, we go in. And there are three very, very nice uh, uh, ladies who, uh, all three of them, who were the casting directors for the daytime uh, uh, soap operas that CBS was producing. And we met them and just, they were just really nice. Okay, so, you know, you, the, 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 these go by pretty fast, all right? We got up and I started to dance awkwardly, which was easy for me, with Phyllis, and I, I started the first line. <laughs> the first line was something like, I'm looking at the lady, right? You know, uh, dogs like us, we ain't such dogs as 
we think we are. And there was sort of a, I could hear kind of this <laughs> coming, coming from the direction of them. And so we, we did this scene, okay, and we finished and turned. And the, the, the three of them are kind of wiping their eyes. Now, I told you a story about how I, I did Skip to My Lou for a Broadway musical, and, and they were laughing so hard they were on the floor. In this case, they were seated at the long table, and they were dabbing their eyes. I could tell they were moist, and they were just had this huge smile on their face. And one of them said, how, what made you choose that one, that scene? Because they all knew the scene, uh, because they're in the business, they know what they're doing, and I'm sure they all uh, saw, you know, that uh, original movie and TV show, so they, you know, knew it. But for some young actor starting out, coming in, and doing this sort of a, a self-deprecating type of a scene. They, she said, we never seen anybody do this at one of our auditions before. Not only the scene, but the choice. And they were just, they were delighted. And uh, uh, the way that they wrote my, you know, our names down or what, I could tell, you know, that that's a good sign. So, um, uh, they thanked us for, you know, doing such a wonderful scene and stuff like that. And, you know, you can imagine how many scenes they've seen, like that list where they say, please don't bring any of these scenes in. We've seen them, you know, too much. Um, left, and the upshot is, two weeks later, I did a day on a soap opera, a CBS soap opera. They called me in. And um, uh, one of the ladies, uh, I... Um, came and saw me in a play once, and uh, one of the other ladies, went, after I moved to Los Angeles, uh, and she, I think, retired and semi-retired and left CBS, and her and her husband moved to um, Los Angeles. Um, by the way, just a side note, her husband, um, Pat's husband, actually, I worked with their son, unbeknownst, uh, aside when I was bartending and the two of us uh, were, were doing a bartending gig together. Uh, but her uh, husband uh, was well known for the one who in the famous restaurant Sardi's where they have the character etchings of famous people, you know, the, the, um, the drawings. I, I don't know if etchings is the right word. I don't want to insult it, but the wonderful artistic drawings that are on the wall of that restaurant, he, he was the artist. So anyway, um, that's what happens when you really don't give up and you just keep dialing that number, hang up, dialing, hang up, something and some things will come out of it.